there's an awful lot of rabbits up here, there's one over there. Couple over there. Well, I've been asked to clear some paddocks of some rabbits and by digging holes and scrapes in the paddocks, they present a real risk to the horses here. Because if a horse puts a foot down a rabbit hole and breaks its leg, then it's probably gonna have to be destroyed. Um, it's actually a new permission for me. I've not, I've not shot here before until today, but I have been down three or four times to have a good look around and there's plenty of rabbits down here. The, the permission itself is only about five or six acres, but the owner also owns all the surrounding land, which is really, really big. Um, so that gives me a nice safe uh, fallout zone, but they've asked me to concentrate purely on the paddocks um, Because up until recently the, ho the the rabbits have been quite happy to stay out in the surrounding fields And they haven't posed a threat to the horses The owner also says that there um, there has been some shooting on here in the past, but not for a number of years So I'm hoping I can get nice and close stalking to a few rabbits for a few shots But I'll probably sit down and ambush one or two as well. Anyway, let's see how we get on well, I can see one about probably 80 meters away in an open gate. So it's right by the stable block. So I think I'm gonna use the stable block and see if I can get a little bit closer. Well that's good, it's always nice to, uh, to get a first shot, a successful one on a new permission. Um, before we go any further, I might as well talk about the gear. Um, the rifle is an FX Impact M3, it's a .25 calibre FAC rifle. Now although this is a small permission, uh, the extra range that the rifle gives me means I won't have to move around so much and disturb what rabbits I can see. Uh, and also there's a huge backdrop all the way around this permission, so I've got nice safe shots in all directions. The rifle, uh, the scope is a Hick Micro Alpex A50T. I've been using this a huge amount at night uh, with the IR illuminator, but it's just as good during the day. And it also means that I can obviously record shots as well. And then holding them both together, as always, is a set of sports match scope mounts. Right, let's go and pick that one up. Well, I can see lots of rabbits along this far hedgerow. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head up to the far corner, sit by the fence and the long grass there, and hopefully pick off one or two as they appear. So I'm a big fan of Primos trigger sticks, but I wrote a review on a bunch of tripods for Air Gunner magazine and was really struck by how stable a platform that they give you. So I bought this set, it's a set by Recon, um, and it normally comes with a clamp so you can put just about any rifle into it that you want to. But I fitted a, a, an Arca accessory rail so that I can attach it directly to the ball, the, to the ball joint up here. Um, really, really versatile. You can also use them standing up, sitting down as well. And if you splay the legs right out, you can use it for shooting prone too. But all I'm gonna do now is just sit here, shut up and hope that not, uh, a couple of rabbits come out along this hedgerow.
Well, that was three in a row. Um, I've got a little bit of cover behind me here, but not much. And I think, to be honest, the rabbits are just used to see, seeing people move around. So they cut me a little bit of slack. Um, the first one looked directly at me at about 30 meter was, meters and was munching away on some grass. And I got him nice and cleanly. Then the other two kind of went a little bit further away and were a little bit spooked. The second one was kind of looking away into the hedgerow and I got him. And then the third one, I could only really just see the top of his head over the long grass, but he went down nice and clean as well. But I'm gonna go and pick those up and put them in the back of the truck. Well, I saw a rabbit just the other side of this fence here and got into a nice position about probably 35 meters away and hit him really cleanly. Then I saw another one a little bit tighter to the fence, moved over a little bit. It was a little bit uneven the ground, but these sticks, you know, that's the beauty of them. Um, took the shot and I didn't realize it, but I forgot about this electric fence ribbon that goes down the side of the, of the fence and the shot actually clipped that sent the pellet way off course and he lived to to dig another hole another day oh well Well, I spotted that one probably, well, the rangefinder said it was 38 metres. And uh, he was in the long grass facing away from me. I had to give him a couple of squeaks to get him to put his head up, which he obliged by doing. And uh, yeah, cracked him right in the back of the head and he's gone down clean as a whistle. Go and pick him up. Now my mate Neil, bless him, got me a self-heating cappuccino coffee. You turn it upside down, press a thing, warms it all up, and hey presto, instant coffee. Oh, I'll tell you why it's not bad either. And there's a rabbit. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that was nice, having a nice refreshing cup of coffee. And I spotted a rabbit over on the far side of the paddock there. Fortunately, I'd left my gun over there while I was having a coffee. And uh, yeah, he popped up just by the fence line. So that's another one in the bag. Back to my coffee now. Well, that was a great one to finish on, nice and clean at about 40 metres. I'll go and pick him up. Well, that's not a bad start at all. I've only been here for a couple of hours and I've got what, eight rabbits, so I'm really pleased with that. And more importantly, I think the paddock's owner is going to be pleased as well. I can still see lots of rabbits around. I've just seen one run across there. So I think I might give it another sneaky half hour, but that's a really good start. Now the rifle, the Impact M3 has performed really, really well. As you might expect, FAC 25 caliber is hit really hard and put the rabbits down instantly. And the Hick Micro Alpex A50T has, has performed superbly well as well during the day. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna do is before too long, I'm gonna come back in the dark, put the IR torch on the Alpex and give it a go at night. So until then, Thanks very much for watching. A great session on the rabbits for Rich there. Next up, something a bit different as I take a look at a backyard fun gun. You can't beat a bit of backyard tin toppling after work on a summer's evening, especially if you've got kids who are showing an interest in shooting. Now, the pistol that I have here is perfect for doing just that. It's the Benjamin Trail NP Mark II. It's distributed in the UK by Rangerite and it retails for a really pocket-friendly £149. For the price, this is a really nice, solid air pistol. Now, it weighs about 1.6 kilos and it measures around 40 centimeters without the cocking aid fitted um, and about 49 centimeters with it and I do have it on here. I'll talk more about it later but I do think that most people will want to use it. So on the whole, it's just a really nicely made air pistol. It's well finished and it feels very robust. This is a well balanced pistol and it comes into the aim really nicely. Now the molded grips are ambidextrous, really fill the palm and set you up well for the trigger. They have some stippling and also some grooves on both sides and generally feel really good in the hand. When it comes to sights, you've got several options. Now there's a Picatinny accessory rail on the underside of the barrel, so you could fit a laser sight to that. Up top, you've got about 10 centimeters of dovetail rail, so you could uh, take advantage of that and mount up with a long eye relief pistol scope. You can see that out of the box, that rail is used to accommodate the rear element of the fiber optic open sights, which facilitate fast target acquisition and are brilliant for plinking. Now, that rear element has finger adjustable dials for windage and elevation adjustment and two very bright green aiming points. The front element is red and equally bright and the setup just works an absolute treat. The trigger blade is pretty basic as I would expect on a pistol of this price, but it has a two stage action and it works perfectly well. Now there is actually a screw behind the blade that can adjust uh, second stage travel, 
but Benjamin recommends against tinkering with it unless you really know what you're doing. And in all honesty, this one does the job perfectly well as it comes. Um, it is a fairly heavy trigger, but I've got to say, I like that on a plinking pistol. The Trail NP Mark II has a cross bolt type safety catch positioned just above the trigger blade. Uh, it's manual and can be reset. Now you push it across from the left to make it safe and then push it back across from the right to the left when you're ready to take the shot. When it comes to this pistol's power plant, the NP in its name stands for Nitro Piston which means this is a gas ram pistol. So you don't need CO2 capsules to keep it powered up. And also it just generally feels less twangy than a spring powered pistol. Now it's cocking stroke is a bit of a heave and that's where that barrel extension slash cocking aid really comes into play. It gives you extra leverage, which really does help. And I think that will make it manageable for most shooters. So, to cock the Trail NP Mark II, you give the front of the barrel a bit of a smack to detach the lockup, and then draw it all the way down until it clicks into position at the end of the cocking stroke. Now, as I said, that cocking stroke does take a bit of effort, but it is smooth. You then load a pellet directly into the breech, and then swing the barrel back up, snapping it into the lockup, which does feel very secure. This 177 caliber pistol has a 19 centimeter rifled barrel, which is designed for use with conventional air gun pellets. Uh, in terms of power output, this, this one is running at around four foot pounds with 8.6 grain pellets. Now that is plenty of punch for plinking, but still comfortably within the UK legal limit and perfect for the backyard. I've been really impressed with this air pistol's firing cycle. Now, apart from being relatively quiet, it's also fast and smooth, and its recoil is negligible. Now, accuracy-wise, you do have to be realistic with budget-priced air pistols, but with support, this one is capable of 35 millimeter groups at 10 meters, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if that were to improve with more use. And you've got to remember, that air pistols like this are made for backyard plinking and tin toppling in particular, and I've been having a great time doing just that. So that's the Benjamin Trail NP Mark II air pistol. It's a nice looking pistol, it's solidly made, and it's got a great gas ram action. Now that cocking aid is a brilliant addition. It just makes it so much easier to cock than a lot of air pistols producing similar power output. Now I've had a great time using it, so do check it out if you're looking for a backyard fun gun at a very, very good price. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again with much more in two weeks time. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and also do take a look at the subscription offers that we have for Airgun World. You should be able to find a link to those in the show description. So I'll see you again in a fortnight and in the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.